Welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about something that millions of people enjoy, all the while acting like they've never even seen it in action. We're going to be alright if you don't tell your mom about that joke. In 1964, United States Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart famously said, I know it when I see it, when trying to describe what should and shouldn't be considered. You know, never mind. I'm going to stop trying to make this joke work. While not having a formal definition work for him, it's not going to work for me or today's topic, white privilege. Now, kids, it's important for you to not only know what white privilege is, but to be able to recognize it. For instance, in Columbus, where your father's from, downtown on Broad Street in Marconi is a city hall building. In front of that building is a statue of Christopher Columbus. That's white privilege. Now, boys, when you come to understand what white privilege is and be able to recognize it, that does not give you an excuse to blame everything on white privilege or the man. What am I talking about? Now, white privilege covers a lot of things from laws and policies to makeup companies not offering darker shades to black hair being deemed unprofessional at work and band-aids being flesh colored. All of these things help to make fair skin normal while giving whiteness the benefit of the doubt. The term white privilege was first coined by Peggy McIntosh in an essay from 1988 called White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. In this essay, Peggy went on to catalog a number of things that occur in her day-to-day -day life that she once took for granted. She said, when I am told about our national heritage or civilization, I am shown that people of my color made it what it is. Now, privilege itself is defined as a right, immunity, or benefit enjoyed only by a person or people beyond the advantages of most. Okay, full disclosure, I have privileges for being a man and yes, even for being black. For instance, being a man, people usually think it's funny or interesting that your mom, who is a power lifter, can squat and deadlift more than me. When it comes to strength, I get the benefit of the doubt over a woman. As a black person, people assume that I can dance and play basketball. I mean, I can. Of course I can do both. Me being able to do both is seen as normal, but the advantages that come from being white in America far outweigh what I've been fortunate enough to experience. Since we've defined privilege, we need to also define what it means to be white. White people are white Americans of European descent. This should be known as European Americans, but prefer not to refer to themselves as that. Kids, don't call white people Caucasian. It's racist and inappropriate. By the way, white people calling themselves Caucasian is just one symptom of white privilege. Without an effective description of what white privilege is, any discussion about white privilege will muddy the waters of this here community pool. A pool that black people aren't even allowed in. So let's dip our toe in this thing. White privilege does not mean that the lives of white people are easy and everything has been handed to them. No. Any success, struggles, or sacrifices should be acknowledged as such, regardless of skin color. That's not what we're talking about. However, white people's struggles, trials, tribulations, and hard times were not caused by their skin color. What may be more interesting than privilege itself is the idea of whiteness. Earlier, I had to define what it meant to be white because there are people who are now considered white that weren't always looked at that way. At the turn of the 20th century, when Polish, Italian, and Irish people migrated to the U.S., they were met with opposition by traditional Western European white people who already established themselves in this country. Eventually, their culture and way of life were no longer disruptive and they began blending in and assimilating. Plus, they shared a common enemy, black people. By the way, the fact that Polish, Italian, and Irish people successfully immigrated to the United States in the first place is impressive because people from countries like India were not allowed to do so. More on that in a second. In order to maintain privileges while denying them to others, white people have done some things to prove whether or not a person passes as white or is actually white. You know, like the one drop rule or the brown paper bag test. So when I see stuff like this, I think people should keep in mind that being mixed, biracial or multiracial and having European in your heritage, but not being fortunate enough to look white or assimilate to the culture, you may struggle with identifying as white and enjoying those privileges. Of course, it isn't easy for black people in our culture to blend in, nor should we have to. Black culture has added music, art, lingo, and other stuff to this country. People from every race enjoy these things. Without people of color, whose culture would white people appropriate? When comparing the plight of people of color to that of white people, it's not like people of color are a united front. We're not a cohesive unit. However, what we all have in common is systemic oppression and structures carried out by the government, 
businesses, and schools, which further gives the benefit of the doubt to European Americans over those who do not meet the racial standards of normal in this country. You know, in the land stolen from the Native Americans after years and years and years of genocide. So boys, there's the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. There was a driving out period which led to at least two massacres. Then there's Japanese internment during World War II after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Note that the other parties in the Axis power, Germany and Italians, were not treated this way because they're white. Then there's the Immigration Act of 1965. Before this, people from countries like many in East and South Asia were barred from coming to the U.S. Unless you, and this is important, were gifted or talented. Being able to handpick which people of color you want is the whitiest, privilegiest thing I've ever heard of. So when folks want to pop off spouting out stats about black people, such as our high school dropout rate, the rate of single parent households, the number of black people having kids before marriage, and my favorite, black on black crime, I think it's interesting because those who benefit from white privilege are keenly aware of the struggles of the black community. Now, I gotta say, as a black man, that the numbers are true and need to be addressed, and they are being addressed. But these problems in the black community are said to be because, well, because we're black, or even making our struggles to be because of our culture. Where white privilege comes in is in the opioid epidemic, which is deemed a public health crisis or the suicide rate of middle-aged white males, which is the highest such demographic, and the fact that most mass shootings are committed by white males. None of these things are attributed to white people. No one's blaming white culture. Who's even talking about these things? Who knows these stats? These things are important and need to be addressed by all people, not just white people. Now, I could give examples before the 20th century, but redlining and blockbusting did happen because of whiteness, and it sucked for black people. These things had lasting effects and the mindset that led to privilege years ago persists even today. Now there's a difference between racism and white privilege. However, racism built white privilege. Racism's tool of choice was denying black people access to wealth and education. Wage, wealth, and income inequality is worse than ever. School segregation is at its highest since the 70s. So the GI Bill, issued to veterans after World War II. A lot of people used that money to buy homes and to go to college, but a number of black people couldn't use it at all. Speaking of houses, Levittown, the first suburb in America, didn't even allow black people. Other suburbs followed suit. Highways built to get people to and from the suburbs, a number of them were built through black neighborhoods, destroying communities. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was all out destroyed. It wasn't a race riot. It was a massacre from white people on black people. Boys, I'm not presenting any new information. All of this was found through research on the internet. Now, when talking about white privilege, you're going to have fundamental differences of opinion with some people. Some people see banks offering subprime loans as a decent opportunity for people of color to get a mortgage. I see predatory lending. Some see affirmative action as discrimination against white people. I see an admission of guilt from the government trying to right its wrongs from discrimination. Some people see Obama being president as the end of racism in America. I see it as a very beginning of progress. Let's get this straight. The Civil Rights Act made systemic racism in education and the workplace illegal. It didn't make it impossible. Black people in this country need to work as hard as they can to achieve the American dream, whatever that is. Boys, you need to run as fast as you can because there will be obstacles in your way and your skin may be one of them. Just like it would be irresponsible for a black person to blame all of their problems on white people, it would be equally as troubling for a white person to all out deny white privilege. Dismissing that being white in America has helped is becoming obscene. White privilege is real. You know it when you see it. Now go play. If you white folks want to be treated the way blacks are in this society, stand. Nobody's standing here. That says very plainly that you know what's happening. You know you don't want it for you. I want to know why you're so willing to accept it or to allow it to happen for others.